Last week, I made a video about me giving away this Wacom tablet. A lot of you mentioned you'd like to start digital art, but you don't know how. Well, in this video, I'll be telling you about my digital painting process. Let's get started. By the way, for those who wanted to know, I'll be announcing my giveaway winner next week. So if you'd still like to win this, comment below. All right, back to today's video. The first step of my digital painting process always starts with a pencil and paper. So for this digital painting, I'm going to choose the time when I faced a green sea turtle in Hawaii. So last year I went to Hawaii with my wife and naturally we went snorkeling. When I go traveling or go anywhere, I always make sure that I have my camera with me so that I have some good references for my artwork. So there was this one day when we went snorkeling in a place called Shark's Cove. The place was difficult to get to and only if you're an experienced swimmer, you'll be able to get inside there. Since not a lot of tourists are there in that spot, there's a lot of fishes, good healthy corals and a lot of sea turtles. So I went in there with my trusted GoPro and I was swimming in there trying to capture all that I could. And all of a sudden, a green sea turtle sneaked up on me right about this side. And one interesting fact in Hawaii is if you touch a green sea turtle voluntarily you'll be fined about $100,000. So like any safe traveler, I wasn't gonna touch a green sea turtle and pay $100,000. So when it sneaked that down me right by my side, I didn't know what to do, I was panicking. I was trying to move away without touching the turtles. But thankfully, the moment the turtle noticed me, he dove down suddenly right in front of me and he just passed by underneath my arms. In that moment, I wanted to switch on my GoPro and capture that moment. Even though I was panicked and scared, that was one of the most beautiful moments I've had. It's not every day you face a green sea turtle right up to your face, right? So I wanted to capture that. So when I tried to switch on my GoPro, it died on me. The battery went out. Too bad, right? That was such a surreal moment. I was so frustrated that I couldn't capture that on camera. But luckily, we as artists have more than one way of creating a scene. So even though I couldn't capture it on camera, I still had that image on my mind. There was no way I was gonna forget that. So that's what I wanted to recreate today. So step number one, I finished my sketch. So once I have my sketch finished, I import it onto my Photoshop, which will be my step two. So once I have imported onto my Photoshop, I try to color correct it so that I just get the outline of my sketch and not all the page texture or anything around it. So I usually multiply it and apply some levels and voila, there you go. You just have a clean line art of your sketch and once you reduce the opacity you have a good clean base to start with and this will be my starting point on my digital art so step number three find good references since i don't have any photo reference of this image i wouldn't know how lighting works or what sort of colors would work so i try to take some references and collect them up on a separate layer something like this i take references that resemble the picture i have in mind for example these three are cartoon sketches that I'm trying to replicate. The color of the sea is something that I liked in this image. So I want to take this image and I want a good reference point for my snorkeling goggles. And if I needed any ripples on my art, this image would be greatly helpful. So once I have my reference set and my sketch set, it's time to start drawing. And as always, my trusted choice of tablet is the Wacom Intuos Tablet Small. This has gotten the job done for me on a lot of occasions, so I'm gonna stick with that. And this is the tablet I'm giving away to one of you guys. So if you're still interested in winning it, comment down below. This is the last week of me accepting entries for winning this. So in my next week's video, I'll be announcing the winner. Getting back to today's video. I usually turn the opacity down. That's just my preference. It gives me a good visual reference of the sharp edges I need to have. I choose a flat sharp edge brush with pressure sensitivity. So if you're using a tablet, I highly recommend switching this on, which gives you thick lines on high pressure and thinner lines on lower pressure. I also recommend having the smoothing tool up to 30%. The reason I recommend this is when you start drawing lines pretty slowly, you usually tend to have a shake in your lines. So even though if you go try to go straight, you somehow manage to have a shake in your lines. But instead, if you have the smoothing to about 30%, that's usually how much I have. Even though no matter how slow you go, you have a pretty, good, pretty straight line. The higher you go, the smoother the line is. But usually I like to keep it at 30%. So with that said, I like to begin with the gray color and just trying to go up the outline and just filling up the shape. So once I'm done with this process, it looks something like this. The reason I do this is, for example, 
I create a new layer and this arrow mark represents the masking layer. So anything I draw on this mask layer will not come out of this base gray layer. So it gives you a bit of freedom and you, you needn't worry about the edges on every single layer you draw. So I highly recommend starting off with the base gray layer. It's a tedious work, but it's highly worth it. So, so once I have this gray layer set, I begin color blocking it. Like the skin, the eye shade, the dress, the hair, and everything that I could color block it. Simple, right? Start off with a gray layer, color it. And once the color blocking is finished, when you switch off the sketch layer, you can see now we are going somewhere. It's beginning to take shape of what we have in our minds. So once I have the color blocking set, it's time to go to the background. Remember, I mentioned that I like the background in one of the reference images. Let's go check that. And this is the image I like for my background. So when you choose the brush layer, which is this and press alt and you have this eyedropper tool and you'll be able to pick any color you want so i picked this color and this this lighter green color and this darker green color so i picked those and i have those two colors over here as reference so once i have that uh, i just begin filling up the background as i want it to be i just use these images as references try filling up the background and I have this flow set, this flow set to 23% and this icon clicked. The reason being this gives an airbrush kind of quality. So for example, let me paint this green. And when I pick this color and try to overlay it, it gives a transparent quality to it. So the less pressure I give, it gives an transparent quality to it. And I can pick that color and use it in between and just work on the blending from there. I took my time and came up with this background. So now we have our color blocking set, our background set, and now comes the interesting part. I add my lights and shadows. This gives the depth to my digital art. It makes it look like a scene. And this is the phase which brings the painting to life. One simple trick that you can do, choosing the right colors is always tricky for lights and shadows. So one simple trick that I use is using the levels that's right over here which is this icon you can have you can either go to adjustments and click levels or you can go to adjustments icon on the layers tab and click on levels and i have this levels layer layer mask to this entire artwork all i do is try to increase the brightness because i want the light coming this way so i go to the levels and i try to increase the brightness of my artwork so so once I click this white box and go to brushes and select the black color, anything I paint over this layers, it just erases off what I don't need. Since I've brightened up my artwork, all I do is simply erase the part where I feel the light wouldn't hit. Since it's coming from this side, the light usually hits all the way over here and you have shadows over here. So I'm just going to erase the, the bright sections from the levels layer. So once you start doing this, you have a sense of shadow and depth. So upon completion, it looks something like this. So we go from a flat image like this to an image which has depth and lights and shadows. Since this image is going to be underwater, I wanted to give a cool look to it. So to do that, all I have to do is go to my adjustments panel, select color lookup. And from there, you have the options of choosing any kind of look you want. For example, you if you click the bleach bypass, it gives a bleach look. If you click candlelight, it gives you a warm look. So since this is going to be underwater, I'm going to choose the moonlight. This automatically gives you the look like you have something that is underwater. Again, I use the same process that I use with levels. Choose the brushes, set it to black color and erase the part where you want some light. So by slowly doing this, I took it to an image which looked like this to this. Looks amazing, right? So I use a lot of combinations of layers which uses levels and colors lookups. So I need not go into the trouble of choosing the right colors for my lights and shadows and coming up with a mess with it. So this is an easy trick that I follow. If I want to refine it, I just pick all of these colors and build up a color library like this. And from here, I just start painting. I like to take some more time with it and finish up my painting. So once I'm done with this, I'll be sure to post it on my Instagram. 
so this is typically my painting process so from here i'll add a bit more details on texture of the skin texture of the fabric fill up the background so i'll be taking my time finishing this up so once i'm done with this artwork so i'll be uploading onto my instagram so be sure to check that out once it's up so this sums up my digital painting process if you'd like to know more about how i go about digital painting or painting be sure to comment below i'll be sure to make a video about it in the coming weeks and hopefully this video helped you a lot and i'd like to see you creating something like this and share it on my instagram as always thank you for checking my video see you in the next one